Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Artyom. Um, I'm a product marketing manager at JetBrains. I'm a product marketing manager for IntelliJ Idea. Uh, but today, I'd like to tell you um, about another, a different tool we have been working on for some time lately at JetBrains. Uh, it is a service for collaborative development and pair programming, uh, which is called Code With Me. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, let me just navigate to its explanation and uh, provide it with the use cases and features that it has. And let's discuss uh, if it suits you and if you should try it out and use it. OK, so first things first, uh, what is Code With Me? Uh, Code With Me is a new collaborative development and pair programming service. Uh, what it does is that it enables you to share the currently opened project in your IDE with others and work in it together uh, in real time. And here in the presentation, uh, you can see a very basic image of what it looks like. Below, you can see the host who has shared a link uh, and uh, provided it to their teammate. And above, there is a guest who has uh, joined uh, their session, the host session, and have started to writing down uh, a very simple shortcut for the print statement in Java. And uh, I'll be showing you more of this stuff, of course, in the live demo a little bit later. But first things first, and let me talk a little bit about the use cases that Code With Me has. So uh, there is a number of use cases that we see internally and uh, that uh, were already proven uh, to be used by uh, our users. Uh, the first one is pretty obvious. Uh, Code With Me can be used for prayer, pair programming. So you can invite your teammate uh, to investigate issues, to review the code, and uh, work on your code together. Um, the second case is uh, related to the first one, but uh, it's a little bit more of a sub case. So swarm or mob programming. So you can develop, debug, debug and fix code uh, simultaneously with your whole team on a single remote IDE. And in this case, by the remote IDE, I mean that there should be one host and uh, who has shared a link uh, with many different guests uh, with their team, and they have connected to them and can do things uh, together. So uh, here it's important to mention that currently Code With Me uh, easily fits up to 20 people that we've tried uh, to connect. So we've tried to connect with 20 people, and it works perfectly without any latency issues normally uh, in one session. But uh, that's more of a more of a you know suggestion because actually you can uh, set up a meeting with over 40 people or there is no actual limit uh, but when we've tried it with over 40 people I think our QA has tried it out and they've started to experience some uh, real issues uh, with the CPU and the latency uh, which makes sense uh, it's also important to mention that uh, while you can have as many people in the code with me session with you, only five of them can edit code at the same time. Um, so uh, let's navigate to the other case. So guiding and mentoring. So obviously, uh, you can use code with me to invite others to follow your project so you can show and explain code to them. It's a great fit for classroom, for instance, if you're, uh, uh, if you're a teacher and you have your students, uh, you've shared a link with them to your project and you want them you want to show them around, you can actually also allow them to only uh, read your project and make them follow you so that uh, they will be automatically following your every step, and not only the code editing, but also navigating through files and stuff like that. I'll be showing you that uh, later uh, as well. So uh, there are other use cases more particular. For instance, Code With Me has proven to be already used by some of our users for technical interviews. So. Uh, in essence, uh, some of our customers uh, have reported to use code with me to interview software developers by giving them tasks in real time and see how uh, these potential developers, I mean, uh, potential um, employees of a company solve a particular issue in real time. And the final case, which is currently grayed out because we're still working on it, is uh, remote development. Another important thing I think uh, suitable for many people uh, so we are working to make Code With Me headless so that you can start it up on a remote machine and work on it uh, locally, so connect it locally to a remote machine while no one is on that machine. And at the same time, there will be no source code hosted on your local laptop or desktop uh, computer. So uh, 
uh, yeah, once again, we're still working on it. Um, provide an estimate when it should 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 be uh, shipped, but at some point it should. However, I think we're going to start to ship this to enterprise uh, companies at first. Um, anyway, let me navigate further. And speaking of the enterprise companies, uh, I'm I'm always I'm well not always, but uh, pretty often asked if Code with Me has a private version, uh, a self-hosted version. Uh, so yes, it does, and um, uh, we call it Code with Me on premises. Or code with me uh, on-premises version. Um, so first of all, it's important to mention that uh, code with me uh, with code with me your project data is going through JetBrains service, of course, by default, end-to-end -end encrypted. However, some teams require an extra level of security or have strict compliance policy. For instance, if you're working for a bank or if you're working for a governmental agency, it might make sense that your company. Uh, uh, wants to have all their code in a private network. So if this is your case, you can set up and run code with me on your own server as long as you have a Linux machine and you're ready to set up your own uh, lobby server. Speaking of the lobby server, uh, as you can see on the pictures here, you can see a very basic uh, scheme of how traffic is flowing uh, inside your private network and uh, how creating and joining a session happens uh, but you might be wondering what's a lobby so well you can actually understand it from the picture but anyway lobby is uh, basically just a server that is used uh, to manage links so to get a link from the host and share it with the guest and i'm going to be showing you the front end of the lobby server the default one that we're using for the default version of the code with me uh, a little bit later okay let's go further at this point you might be wondering uh, who is code with me for uh, should you use it if you are a JetBrains uh, user or if you're not a JetBrains user and you use uh, diff developer tools from other ecosystems, for instance, Eclipse or VS Code uh, or other options, maybe code editors? Um, so uh, to answer this question, I'd like to uh, say that to pitch that uh, Code With Me uh, is a tool that aims to provide a feature-rich collaborative experience both for people within and outside the JetBrains ecosystem and both for hosts and for guests. So let me explain to you that uh, a little bit uh, better. So first of all, if you um, or if if you want to host your own sessions, yes, you need a JetBrains ID. So uh, I would say that go with me. And if you're already using a JetBrains ID, I would say that go with me is a number one option tool if, if you're using, uh, say, IntelliJ ID or PHP Storm or any other tool, um, actually, except for Rider and DataGrip right now, our IDs that uh, don't support code with me right now, but we're working on that. But that's a side note. Anyway, uh, the reason uh, I say that uh, code with me is a number one option if you're already using JetBrains IDs and need a collaborative development tool is because all the other collaborative development tools within the JetBrains ecosystem, the third-party ones are simply inferior due to lack of some features that Code With Me already provides. And uh, I'm going to be showing you that later, and you can uh, check uh, uh, how it works yourself later as well, and you will see that Code Inside and other things are not supported in other tools within the JetBrains ecosystem uh, as, as, as much as they are supported in Code With Me. Um, Speaking of the guests, so it's important to mention that Code With Me can and should be used by the guests, of course, uh, because uh, as a guest, you actually do not need any JetBrains IDE at all. So uh, if you're invited to the Code With Me session by someone who's using a JetBrains IDE, uh, there is no reason for to, for you to avoid it. There is, uh, you just click a link and a free IntelliJ client will be downloaded for you. It's like a meta IDE that won't need any setup won't need no nothing. It will be just downloaded via a simple link, and you will be connected to the host project. So it means that you will need no more uh, time spent on repository downloading or pulling changes from someone's branch, uh, no time spent on setting up an environment, fixing compile time exceptions or dependency headaches uh, to get to someone's project state. And uh, once again, as a guest, you don't need a JetBrains ID installed. In, in fact, you won't need anything apart from a computer and an internet connection. So, uh, so other things related to uh, answering the question if you should use Code with Me or not uh, are the features that Code with Me provides. So, uh, it's important to mention that all the things that 
JetBrains IDEs are known for, like code auto completion, navigation, and other code inside features, are available not only in the local IDEs uh, and not only for the hosts, but also for the guests who's using an IntelliJ client, for, who are using an IntelliJ client. Uh, so, uh, so things like so you can autocomplete code, navigate to declarations and uh, usages of objects, search through the project and other and use other code navigation abilities like search everywhere and stuff like that. The file structure, everything works. Well, almost everything. We're still adding some features uh, like refactorings and other things. But altogether, our aim is to make the full featured uh, experience of an IDE on the side of the guest available for everyone. So another important subsystem, speaking of the features, is the shared integrated tools that we have. That is uh, that that includes uh, an ability to run code, use the GUIs, the, the graphic user interface uh, debugger, and the testing suite, uh, which are available on the side of the guest as well. So uh, which is pretty cool. However, there is still no VCS support on the side of the guest, but you can already check and roll back your changes on the side of the guest. I'll I'll be showing you that. And by the way, on the side of the host, you will be able to see uh, a change list of every guest who has changed something in your code and easily uh, roll them back if needed. And uh, as of other integrated tools, there is also a remote terminal available for guests. So you can actually have full access to the host machine, which of course brings us to the question of security. And luckily we know how to answer it already. Uh, so uh, a host can choose uh, if every participant has a read-only, edit-only, or full access to their project, uh, as we have added the permissions management system. I'll be showing you that as well. Finally, uh, speaking of the features that are important, uh, there are following modes uh, that allow you to quickly jump to what your teammate is doing and even follow their code and flow completely. And vice versa, you can force other teammates to stop doing whatever they're doing right now and summon them to where you are right now to follow you. And finally, uh, the, feature, the, the feature that I colored in red, uh, audio and video calls. So it's been already introduced, but not announced yet. But this already works in this latest stable versions of JetBrains IDs with code with me. Um, so uh, yeah, as far as I know, there is no other pair programming tool that has video calls embedded. Uh, at this point of time, but we already have it, and I'm going to show you that real quick a little bit later uh, as well. Uh, so there, there is also a chat and audio calls that are available, say, in uh, VS Code Live Share and probably other tools as well. Uh, but the, I, I just wanted to uh, show off a little bit that we also support uh, video calls, and there is no other tool that does it. So maybe it makes sense uh, for you to check out code with me anyway. Um, OK, it seems like I've been doing a lot of talking. And let me, and at this point, you might be wondering, why am I talking so much? Can we actually see what it looks like already? And yes, uh, we totally can. And let me navigate me. Uh, let me navigate to the ID right now. And to the left, uh, I have uh, my local ID. And uh, it's IntelliJ ID, one of the latest versions. And I'm going to show you uh, how you can connect the code with me. And for the sake of simplicity, I will be connecting uh, as a guest on my own machine. Uh, so to the left, you will see the host. And to the right, you will see the guest. So first things first, you would have to install uh, the plugin. But um, I already have code with me installed. But normally, what you would do is you would go to the plugin section in a JetBrains IDE and uh, install the code with me plugin from the marketplace. Uh, after that, uh, you will see that there is co uh, the Code With Me panel available on the toolbar. And from here, I can click Enable Access and Copy Invitation link. And bam, you will be automatically asked if you want to edit your permissions. Here, you can set read-only, edit files, or give full access uh, to your guests. And uh, this will be the default option. Uh, I mean, the one that you choose here for every guest. But you can also uh, choose whether every guest can edit uh, files or have a read-only mode only uh, for so you can set it up for every guest uh, so that they have different access uh, at the same time while having the same code with me session. OK, you can also start a voice call from here, but I'm going to show that separately. Uh, let me just click Enable Access. So at this point, I have a link uh, copied to my buffer. So what I would do is normally go to some chat 
But once again, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to do that uh, on my own machine. And let me just click uh, share. Uh, let me just paste the link here. Imagine that I had it copied from my chat, from my host, and click here. So this is the front end of the lobby server I've been talking about. And uh, let me just skip to the browser just for a little bit. So uh, I already have an IntelliJ client installed. So this is why it shows me that, hey, uh, somebody has invited you to their project and you're successfully connected. Uh, but for the first time, what you would see is that uh, there is um, that to connect uh, to someone's project, you'll see the same message here. But to connect to someone's project, you should copy this link and uh, run it in the terminal. And the free IntelliJ client will be downloaded for you. And if you're using a Windows machine, there will be an executable file .exe that you can download. And, it, and you will be automatically connected to the project. So, but I already have the uh, proper version of Copeland installed on my machine, so I can navigate uh, back to uh, my host and my guests. So what's happening now is we're waiting for the host approval. Let's accept it. And bam. And we have connected successfully to the host machine. So to the left, we can see uh, the host machine. And to the right, we can see uh, the guest machine. And as you can see, this already works in a way that we can see everyone's carrot. So for instance, on the side of the guest, I can see the host carrot. On the side of the host, I can see the guest carrot. Um, anyway, uh, let me, oh, huh, it's funny. They've chosen that uh, the same color was chosen. This is uh, pretty, yeah, normally <laughs> they're different. It's just funny that it's been chosen the same green color for both host and guest. Uh, but let's keep that for now. Um, anyway, uh, so what's what's happening next? So I can see my guests here. I, from here, I can easily kick them or follow them and do whatever. And let me just show you some of the basic features that CodeMe has. So let me navigate to the guest machine and implement some very basic method here. For instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a main method to run uh, this program and write down something. So as you can see, I've started typing something. and. Uh, you can see that both on the has on the guest uh, sorry on the host machine and on the guest machine the completion works. So let me just insert it and continue with my code. Let me start typing something. Variable name say uh, go with me and let's print it out. So once again, completion works almost everywhere. Not almost, but actually everywhere at this point. Uh, print out name. Yeah, great. Variables work. Uh, the ID uh, understands code inside and everything. Uh, let me introduce also this record from Java. Let me instantiate it real quick to write something down as well here. Say uh, developer equals new developer. And yeah, uh, code me already knows what I'm looking for, that I'm looking for this record. And the parameter info works. So it allows me to see actually uh, what parameter I'm looking for here and what I should provide just it would, just like it would do with the uh, on the local in a local ID so I'm looking for the productivity level and let's use the default one the high one and it also shows me errors so for instance here I cannot resolve the symbol developer so let me just use the quick fix to fix this uh, quickly and introduce a local developer and bam, this works as well, just like it would in a local ID. Great. And um, finally, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to provide some message for the developer. And to do that, I'm going to use, yeah, pretty much this method, which is developer, developer pleasure, and provide some string here. Uh, something like this. OK, good. This is working. What else can we see here? Uh, so first of all, um, first of all, let's try and run this code. Will this work? And yeah, it's working. And we can see that uh, this uh, option has worked both for the host and the guest, uh, because currently the guest is allowed to do so. And uh, as of the other important things, for instance, I can follow uh, the guest completely. Um, and what it will do, it will allow me to see what guest uh, is doing right now, and I will follow them completely. So let me just uh, follow the guests. And right now, on the guest's machine, 
I'm going to play around with some navigation. So for instance, can I go uh, to the instantiation of developer? Uh, yes. Uh, can I see that uh, the, the usages? Yes. Can I go, for instance, find the usages of the developer? Yes. But can I go to the library methods or the library uh, uh, library code? For instance, can I go to the string? And yes, I can do that. And more than that, uh, this is already working both for uh, the host and the guest because the host completely follows whatever the guest is doing right now. So even if I start scrolling, uh, the same thing will happen on the host machine as long as they don't press any button to skip to um, snap out of uh, the following mode and get back to the code. So uh, what is else is important to show you here? Um, yeah, the diff preview. So right now I can see on the guest machine that I can roll back uh, any code easily. And uh, on the host machine, I can see the changes by every guest right now. Uh, I can see the, the default changes, the default change list, or the changes that were implemented by the guest and roll them back easily uh, at no time. At the same time, uh, maybe the final thing I wanted to show you is that I can easily uh, edit permissions and provide the read-only mode like this. And at this point, I won't be able to edit anything on the side of the guest. Uh, so. As I mentioned, uh, the debugging and uh, testing will work the same as the run access worked. It, unfortunately, I didn't have an example and a lot of time to show you anything related to that, but, that's, but this is already supported. And maybe one final thing that I forgot to tell you about and actually to show um, is the ability to have audio and video calls. So let's hit enable voice call on the side of the guest and uh, navigate to the toolbar, to the Code With Me toolbar. And from here, uh, you can see the chat. Let's test if it works. Hey, how are you? Yep, and it works. But let me get rid of it to see better uh, the audio and video calls. And right now, the audio call is enabled. So you can see some code on the left, and you can see uh, the actual uh, avatars on the right in the Code With Me um, toolbar. But if I click here, oh, actually, yeah, it works. So for instance, uh, if I had someone else on the guest machine right now, uh, we could have a video chat at the same time and uh, have some uh, calls and have a chat, uh, which is really great. This already works, and you should try it out if you're running a JetBrains IDE. So uh, I think this is pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you for uh, in this small demo. Let me get rid of it. And I'm going to, first of all, get rid of the call. So when you leave the call, it won't stop the session. But to, it will just stop the call, the recent call that we had. And uh, to stop the session, you can either kick off the user. Uh, you can do that with every user. And bam, as you can see now, the guest has been navigated back to the starting page of the IntelliJ client from which uh, he or she can navigate to any other project by the same invitation link. OK, and on the side of the host, finally, I can uh, turn, on, turn access off and disconnect all, which, as you can guess by the name of this option, will turn off access uh, to the Code With Me session, and I can continue with my local project alone. So uh, this is pretty much, I think, what I wanted to show you uh, in this small demo. And finally, to get back to my presentation, I uh, have uh, some links. Um, you can use the, uh, all the links related to the Code With Me project, the issue tracker, the plugin page, the getting started guides, and stuff like that. Uh, you can use the QR code, or I can share any links uh, later. Just let me know uh, in the comments, and I will provide you with any additional information you might have. And thank you very much. I think this is pretty much it. Uh, let me know if there are any questions. I will be glad to answer all of them. Thank you. Oops. Thank you for this awesome talk. Uh, there are two questions. So do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. I, I I totally hear. I'm just trying to stop sharing the screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. Yeah.
Oh, free questions. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, so, how does this code with me feature compares to tuple.app? If you don't know it, just skip it. Just skip the question. Uh, how is this feature? Sorry, uh, it's called related to what? Tuple.app. It's some kind of uh, product. I don't know. Oh, actually, I've never heard of it, so unfortunately, I won't be able to answer it. I should check it out. Okay. So the next next question is. Can I suggest enabling code with me next time on Posobota so we can join remotely? Like uh, the crowd of people who is watching this stream uh, so they can just like connect there and see in their chat brains ID what's happening. Yeah, actually, actually it's possible. Yeah, uh, I, I was thinking about doing it uh, this time, but I thought maybe I won't have enough time for that. But yeah, I, I think it's possible. So we can try it next time. We yeah, will, we will let you know how, how it end up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me know if it's still on the table uh, next month. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the next question is like, is there any limit on for a session? Um, oh, you mentioned that there is basically no limit. But uh, like, what is the limit? Uh, you've been practically trying to uh, achieve. Okay, uh, yeah, there is no limit uh, for the number of guests that can uh, join the session. And right now, no, there is no limit uh, for uh, Code With Me, uh, for Code With Me sessions. And uh, maybe it will be implemented at, at some point for, uh, I don't know, uh, for maybe uh, security reasons or, or something like that. Uh, but uh, what I can tell, though, is that we're working on some pricing options. To, uh, I mean, they will be available. Certainly, there will be a free version of Code With Me mm -hmm. with the multiple functionality. Uh, but uh, maybe we will implement some sort of a limited session uh, in the free version. But I cannot provide any details in that regard simply because we have not uh, built up uh, this, al this already. But at this point, no, there is no such thing as a limit for a Code With Me session. That sounds really cool. So we can try it next time. Yeah. And like, do you have any? That's my question. Do you have any statistics on like uh, what is what is this used most? Like for you mentioned technical interviews, mentoring, and this kind of stuff. It sounds pretty cool, mm -hmm. uh, especially in this COVID times where uh, everyone is remote. So yeah. um, like, do you have any statistics? Like for which kind of use cases is it, is it used used most? Uh, yes, uh, we do have statistics as we ran a survey some time ago, and uh, like uh, and at the same time we have statistics from the product. I mean the product analytics already. So uh, the most used case, like ninety percent or so, if uh, is that it's used for pair programming right now. So basically, there are two people um, uh, that are doing something in in a code with me session right now. So yeah, this is the most uh, this is the most used scenario. Yeah, that, that that sounds uh, that sounds good to me. Yeah? Because like when when you have just like video call, you can share a screen, but another person can't actually edit code. Uh, but with this tool, you can do that. So uh, mentoring is probably not that big advantage, but with the technical interview stuff or with uh, uh, pair programming, this could be really game changer. Yeah, yeah, we were expecting this. This would be the most important case, maybe. And yeah, it's it's working just like that. So it's it's fine. Yeah, it makes sense. It's certainly harder to use code with me, and it's uh, uh, audio and video abilities for in a huge like more programming session. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so sounds about right. Two people seems like yeah, it's a good thing. For instance, when just the case you mentioned is, I think, is pretty popular.